Welcome back to another Top 10. This time we're looking at the Top 10 Worst WWE WWF Wrestlers of All Time That Actually Matter. Coming in at number 10 is Lex Luger. During the 90s, his run was a bit complicated and opinions on his wrestling ab abilities varied among fans and critics. He had limited in-ring skills. His comparison to other talents like Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels was just not there. He didn't have a really good push. And let's be facing it with the WWF fans. You either like him or you don't. And he's a WCW guy. And WWF people really don't like WCW people. Coming in at number nine, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. He's on the list because, well, he always had to have somebody with him to make him good. He's an awesome barber. He's an awesome gimmick and a top tier seller. However, if he wasn't Hulk Hogan's buddy, would he really be as big on the card as he was? He wasn't very good in the ring. He was okay on the microphone and he was a barber and he was probably best known for his tag team run. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, coming in at number nine. Coming in at number eight, the Great Kali. Just a really big man that was used inappropriately, more for comedy towards the end and middle of his career than actually a push. He wasn't Kane, he wasn't Big Show, he was just the Great Kali. And he wasn't very good in my opinion. He had a spot. He was eliminated in Royal Rumbles in funny ways. He's a Hall of Famer, which I don't know how. But coming in at number eight is the Great Kali. Coming in at number seven, ravishing Rick Rude, Intercontinental Champion. Never really got more than that. Rick Rude's in-ring performance was not very good. However, he had a great gimmick with his tights and cut the music was good on the mic when he could do that, but did need the help of Bobby the Brain Heenan and the Heenan family. Had a great body, had the bubblegum look, just wasn't a performer in the ring. Did he have the gimmick? Yes. Was his tights bigger than he was in the ring? Absolutely. And he was managed by the best manager of all time, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Coming in at number six, Goldberg. One of the greatest WCW runs. Goldberg never really cut it in WWE slash F. He never had it. He kind of flailed and floundered. He went up against top people. He hurt Roman. He hurt The Undertaker. He just wasn't safe and he was a shell of himself when he came. This isn't a WCW list, but Goldberg really only had one or two things. Come in, conquer, and destroy. That's why Goldberg is on the list. Coming in at number five, King Booker or Booker T. For me, Booker T is always going to be part of Harlem Heat and was a great tag champion. I never understood his single run except for the spin rooney Could he get the crowd energetic with that spin rooney Yes. He really didn't have much talent in the ring, in my opinion. Won championships because he looked the part. Also, Booker T for me is greater on the mic than in the ring has a great presence, and I miss him being on main card WWE pay-per-views. Wish he would have got the taker to spin a Rooney. Coming in at number four, Viscera. He's the worst of the big guys. He really didn't have any agility, any moves. King Kong Bundy was better than him. Yoko Zuda was better than him. All of the kind of, in quote, fat big people had a shtick. His wasn't just a shtick. It was just come out, squash, not move very much. That's what puts him in the top five of our list. Viscera. Coming in at number three, the giant Gonzalez. The walking, oh, hairy beast. Just wasn't good. Had the height. Couldn't move very well at his age he was in. Taker took him the best he could. On the mic, he was just gibberish. Let's be honest, this guy probably should be number one, but there's two more that's worse than he is. Giant Gonzalez at number three. Coming in at number two, Jinder Mahal. He wouldn't be on this list, except they decided to make him a WWE World Champion. Ugh. 
I don't think he had anything going for him for them to put the belt on him. He does have the look, but every WWE superstar has a look. The one thing WWE was missing at this time was a heel, was a bad guy, and he was one of the ones they tried to push, and it really was not good. But he really couldn't perform in the ring, and that's why it didn't last very long. All right, coming in at number one, let the hate begin. Roman Reigns. That's right. Your champion, the big dog. It's his yard. He owns everything, right? Wrong. He's been in two of the greatest factions in the history of wrestling. He's in the Bloodline and he was in the Shield, and he's the worst member of both of them. And he's still the champion of all of wrestling. The Bloodline is awesome. It has a great storyline and everything else. Roman Reigns does nothing in the ring except that, which makes him just a hyped up Bill Goldberg. Coming in at number one is Roman Reigns, the worst wrestler of all time. I hope you enjoyed watching this top 10 worst list. Leave a comment down below. Tell me which ones you disagree with. Tell me which ones I missed. Again, these are the worst wrestlers that mattered. There were a whole lot of wrestlers that never mattered that could have been on this list. But what's the fun in that? Peace out, home skillets.